Hello, Ohio. Thank you, Secretary Price. Thank you for that kind introduction. That is the second best speech I've stood behind all week. Could you give him another round of applause? That was an outstanding presentation. By the way, it feels great to say Secretary Price. Our country is truly fortunate, truly fortunate to have a leader of his caliber and conviction, a physician, a legislator, someone who understands state government, someone who understands the national government now as the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. And he's going to make a great difference in the life of our nation. You know, it's a great privilege to be back in Cincinnati. It truly is. Last fall, thanks to all of you, thanks to all of your hard work and your support and your prayers, Ohio voted to make Donald Trump the 45th President of the United States of America, and I'm here to say thanks. Thank you. It was uh, quite a campaign. And it's already been quite an administration. How many of you watched his address to Congress on Tuesday night? Did you like that? You know, what, what you saw what you saw a couple nights ago is literally what I see every day in the West Wing. Boundless optimism, boundless energy, and an unshakable belief in the American people and in the capacity of all of you to make America great again. And under President Trump's leadership, we're already making America great again, and it is deeply humbling, I can tell you, for this small town boy from across the border in southern Indiana to have the opportunity to serve as Vice President of the United States of America. And I want to thank you on behalf of my family for the privilege of serving. For the first time in a long time, I said it earlier this week, we've got a President with broad shoulders and a big heart. And it's an honor to serve with him every day. And speaking of which, the President did ask me to come here today and just express his heartfelt thanks. You know, America's small businesses and all the people that work for them were some of our biggest supporters. From the bottom of my heart and on behalf of President Donald Trump, thank you to the small business owners and employees who are the driving force of the economy here in Ohio and all across America. And thank you for coming out today. Thanks to all the small business owners who are with us, including, of course, uh, Dan Reganold and Frame USA. What a great team and a great story. I enjoyed our discussion earlier today. I truly did, and I appreciate your candid feedback about what our administration can do to help businesses and help employees just like yours. And uh, I especially appreciated the tutorial on frame making. But from those of you that may see it on the news tonight, I obviously need a little more coaching. <laughs> How about a big round of applause for all the skilled craftsmen and women who make Frame USA such an incredible success story? They're good. It's hardworking men and women like all of you who make America the envy of the world. You're the backbone of our economy and our country, and the President and I are grateful and inspired by all that you do and know that we're working every day tirelessly on your behalf. Frame USA is really a true American success story. It's been a family-owned business for over 30 years. And thanks to all of you, the company has grown from a small operation to everything we see around us today. You know, that only happens when you're doing something right and you're doing things in the right way. And at Frame USA, you've built a reputation of quality and service and quality products. And let me also thank you. I thank you for your charitable work. It is a model for all to see every month you cut into your bottom line to help those in need. And your generosity inspires me. And I know I'm not alone. I know with confidence that your community, your country, they benefited by all that you do. And so uh, I, I want you to know, President Trump is, is all of your biggest fan. <laughs> and Donald Trump, as President of the United States, is the best friend America small business will ever have. You know, the truth is, the President and I both grew up in, in small family-owned businesses. My family was in the gas station business over in Columbus, Indiana. President Trump grew up in a, 
in a family of builders. And uh, for me, it, uh, I followed a career uh, into uh, public life and public service. And uh, President Trump, who called himself a kid from Queens, ended up deciding he would, he would follow in his father's footsteps after he'd go to Manhattan Island and build the big buildings. <laughs> you know, I always tell people, other than a whole lot of zeros, President Trump and I have a whole lot in common. <laughs> I mean a lot of zeros <laughs> and really it's a belief in the American dream because we both lived it we both seen it in our families and all of you are living that today and you heard his commitment to that in in his speech to Congress on on Tuesday night the president really knows that small business are the engines of our economy and as the president said we're going to restart the engine to create jobs and prosperity and growth like never before Growing up in that small business family over in Columbus, Indiana, and only an hour and a half away from here, I'm tempted to just duck in the car and <laughs> go visit home. As the world knows, the president, actually, I mentioned, grew up in a small business, too, and we both know, we both know the sacrifices that it required, the long hours, the hard work. We both know the fundamental truth of our economy. When small business is strong, America is strong. And rest assured, President Trump and I want to help you become stronger than ever before. If you remember what the President said on the campaign trail, he promised to enact a three-part agenda, didn't he, when he campaigned through Ohio? Jobs, jobs, and jobs. And we've gone to work on that from the day after the election, and it's already made a difference. I like to say we're in the promise-keeping business, and President Trump is already keeping his word. On day one, we went right to work undoing the job-killing policies and executive orders of the last eight years to get the economy moving again. In one of his very first acts on the job, after years of delay, he authorized the Keystone and Dakota pipeline to expand our energy infrastructure and create thousands of jobs. He signed legislation to roll back reams of red tape. He instructed every agency and department in Washington, D.C. to find two regulations to get rid of before issuing any new regulations on businesses in America. And he's taken decisive action to end illegal immigration, strengthen our borders, and uphold the immigration laws of this country. And businesses just like this one here today are already reacting to President Trump's Buy American, Hire American vision with optimism and investment in our country. You heard him talk about it just the other night, didn't you? From GM to U.S. Steel to IBM and so many others, businesses have been announcing that they're keeping jobs here, creating new ones too, tens of thousands of jobs. As Ford Motor Company's chief executive put it, when they made an announcement they were canceling a plant in Mexico and going to build a plant in Michigan, they said it was a vote of confidence in President Trump and his <laughs> agenda to make America great again. What? And you know, we're just getting started. In his address to Congress on Tuesday, the President laid out the biggest, boldest, and best agenda I think I've ever seen in my lifetime. And we're going to pass it from top to bottom with your support. And today I have good news for you. The Obamacare nightmare is about to be over. You know, despite the best efforts of some activists around the country, the American people know the truth. Obamacare has failed, and Obamacare must go. This failed law is crippling the American economy and, and putting an enormous weight on American families. Talk about your fake news. Look at all the broken promises they made about Obamacare. You remember that? You just heard Dr. Price mention it. They told us if, if, that the cost of health insurance would go down. Not true. They told us if you liked your doctor, you could keep him. Remember that one? Not true. They told us if you like your health plan, you could keep it. Not true. Well, now we know the truth, and it's heartbreaking. Today, Americans are paying $3,000 more a year on average for their health insurance. Last year alone, premiums skyrocketed by a breathtaking 25%, and millions of Americans have lost their plans and their doctors. Many of you have felt Obamacare's failures firsthand. It's a job killer, and everybody today knows it. In the last few years, it's been hard enough to get ahead, and Obamacare has only made it harder, much harder. Just ask Frame USA. 
We just heard about it talking to small business owners in a round table upstairs. Healthcare costs skyrocketed here by nearly 20% in the last year alone. And everyone here is struggling to keep up. Now, people might, people might stop and say, well, if the company's insurance premiums go up, how does that affect me? Well, the reality is that the bottom line always affects the people that work at companies. And it's resulted, I just heard upstairs about hard choices that companies had to make. I had one manufacturer with 18 employees, all of whom he appreciated, who had to let three employees go because of the rising cost of health insurance. He said, these are people that have worked for me for years who I wanted to keep on and I wanted to keep them part of our team. And they lost them because of the rising cost of insurance. The endless price hikes, the deluge of regulations eat up time and money that be better spent growing businesses and benefiting workers. Every year the burdens grows and so do the hard choices that, uh, that businesses have had to make. Plenty of other businesses in Ohio and all over the country are feeling the same squeeze. Obamacare is weighing down our job creators and our country's future. That's why President Donald Trump said we're going to repeal Obamacare once and for all. And we're going to eliminate its mandates, its taxes, its intrusion into your businesses and into your lives. And best of all, we're going to replace Obamacare with something that actually works. The President and I want every American to have access to quality, affordable health insurance. That's why we're working with Congress and with Secretary Price to design a better law that lowers the cost of health insurance without growing the size of government. In Secretary Price, you have one of the foremost experts on health care in the entire country. He's only been on the job a couple of weeks. He's already made a huge difference and taken important strides towards, uh, towards limiting Obamacare's damage and replacing it with something better. And the President and I are working with him and congressional leaders every day to finalize our plan, a better plan for better health coverage and a better future, that it's built on a foundation of freedom and personal responsibility. That's the American solution to health insurance challenges in this country. The President laid it out. The President laid out a few key details on Tuesday, giving guidance and direction to the Congress. He said, we're going to give Americans the freedom to buy health insurance that's best for you, to end the era of government-mandated insurance. We're going to let you buy health insurance across state lines, the way you buy life insurance, the way you buy car insurance. We're going to make sure that Americans with pre-existing conditions have access to coverage that they need. We're going to give states, just like here in Ohio, the freedom and the flexibility they need to care for their most vulnerable in the Medicaid program in the best way that works for the people of Ohio and the people of every state. You know, I talked, I talked to Governor Kasich just this morning about our plans on Medicaid, and, and his ideas are part of an ongoing conversation. The truth is, Governor Kasich knows, knows what I knew when I was governor of the state of Indiana. Every state is different. Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky. It's time Washington, D.C. recognizes state-based solutions are a pathway forward for better health care coverage, especially for our most vulnerable. Now, this is just a small glimpse of the plan of what we'll do, and despite some of the fear-mongering that you've heard, you can rest assured, as Dr. Price said, we're going to have an orderly transition to a better health care system that finally puts the American people first. But you know, President Trump's agenda doesn't stop there to kickstart the economy. We're going to pass the biggest tax reform in decades. I guarantee you there isn't anyone here who can make sense of America's tax code, me included. You know, there's an old joke about the tax code that says it's 10 times the size of the Bible with none of the good news. <laughs> Penalizes success, makes it far too difficult for hardworking people and small businesses to achieve the American dream. Takes too much money out of our pockets. It stifles job growth, economic growth, and every other type of growth you need to get ahead. But rest assured, our plan is going to cut taxes across the board for working families, small businesses, and family farms. We want you to be able to keep more of your hard-earned money, plain and simple. And we're going to cut taxes across the board so businesses here in Ohio can compete with businesses around the world and create jobs right here in the Buckeye State.
There's a whole lot more I could talk about, but you've all been here for a while. I'm going to let you off easy. You heard from the President this week. You heard from Dr. Price. And I'm, I'm truly grateful and humbled that you'd come out to hear from me today. I just want to encourage you with the words that, uh, that I think we're demonstrating today that elections have consequences and that ideas matter. I mean, the American people chose a leader in President Donald Trump who has a clear vision for the future of this country. It's a vision of a, of a stronger and a safer America, an America that rebuilds our military and provides our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard with the resources they need to defend our nation, protect our families, and come home safe today. It's a president who will put the safety and security of the American people first, take decisive action in immigration, ending illegal immigration, and also ensuring that when people come into this country, they don't represent a threat to the people of this country and that we see no more our hope and our prayer, the kind of moments that we saw in Columbus, Ohio, not so long ago, with that terrible attack in San Bernardino in Orlando, Florida. President Donald Trump will continue to put the safety and security of the American people first and fight for your security every day. You heard the message today about prosperity, repealing and replacing Obamacare, rolling back regulations and taxes. And also, I'm proud to say that President Trump has demonstrated again that he's a man of his word by nominating a judge to fill the position on the Supreme Court of the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia, who will uphold the God-given liberties enshrined in the Constitution of the United States. And Judge Neil Gorsuch must be confirmed. So I just encourage you. I encourage you to stay engaged. Stay engaged with, uh, with the process, to let your voice be heard in every proper way. Because we've got an extraordinary moment on our hands. And we've got a leader who will meet that moment with courage and conviction, a willingness to fight for the American people, to fight for American jobs. And I truly do believe that with your help and with God's help and with President Donald Trump, in the Oval Office every day. We will make America safe again. We will make America prosperous again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Ohio. Thank you for being here today, and God bless you. Let's go get it done.